I wanted to, to share a few things with you. I don't know if you had um had a chance to to uh, I don't know if everybody had a chance to see uh, the booklet that we've done for forty fifty nine. And I promise you, it'll be published really, really soon. We're finishing the last few touches. It's going to be on age resource, it's gonna be on Kahoot, it's gonna be all over the place. And you can access it, change it, modify it, use it to your liking. Um, I'm gonna share the screen and go through it with you. I wanted to show you this. I don't know if everybody had a chance to, to see this. Uh, I know some of you have seen it before. I'm just going to tell you what we're going to be adding to it. We're going to be adding to it also a section for um, for laboratories, but not necessarily to be done in the lab, but laboratory to watch and to practice uh, practice lab reports. So we've done this uh, for um, uh, the 4059 and the 4060, just to uh, show you. Over here, you have the uh, overview of the uh, uh, of the uh, topics to be covered for the um, for the forty fifty nine for your students. So this is your this is the master copy of the teacher. You have the vocabulary section, like we mentioned before, and you have a section where if you have allophones or secondary language learners, so you could add it into the note in their own languages or a definition. This is up to you, but these are all, let's say, the vocabulary that will be used within. We talked about, um, here we put a list of material for everybody with the, the laboratory and their, uh, the material that you need per lab. And you also have the list for the exams, you know, just to uh, show you over here. We'll, this list, by the way, just got added three, four other labs that will be added. Like there'll be a lab on mirrors, there'll be a lab on lens, you know, there'll be a, a lab also on sound. So just to kind of increase the library for the 59, and it's up to you to pick and choose what you'd like. We included two documents for, for, um, for, uh, for circulation, uh, you know, you know, uh, two, two suggestive way of follow-up feedback between teacher student. So notice over here, lab to do, laboratory to watch. So if you want to work more on the C1, uh, like specifically, uh, specifically the criteria of just doing lab report, there there will be a section of laboratories, uh, video laboratory that you could use for that. Notice over here, we included another thing, and this is thanks to the EBITB gang. <laughs> uh, we had put and um, and what to do here, so we put an instruction to the student section where you have before doing the lab, I will read my documents. I will highlight words I don't know or understand and make sure I refer to my vocabulary lexicon. So I'm, we're teaching them how to study when we're, or like how to prepare for labs, review my class note, watch the provided video a first time without taking notes, watch the provided video a second time or more with taking notes at this point, review laboratory security measures, review laboratory instruments, sorry for this, um, and their function, Ask teacher if any clarification is needed. So this is teaching them how to prepare before walking into the laboratory. Now, during the lab, bring my document with my note to the lab, follow laboratory security measures, do my lab, correct my material list if I need to, correct my procedural list if I need to, uh, pay, uh, pay attention to my unit conversion and my units. I fill in my data table if, uh, if it is required. Uh, take note of any error I made during the lab because there is that potential error, you know, section in, in the exam that or in the preparation of laboratories that they're doing the lab, that they need to notice if any mistake they've done during the lab and any correction. So this could be like real in real time and show your work to your teacher. Once that is done, we get to the end saying, okay, now I put away my, my laboratory instrument and make sure the station is clean write my laboratory uh, report. And once I, once I get the teacher's feedback, I take notes for next lab. So this was added, thanks on good feedbacks. Um, also to the, thanks to the Mysticini group today, <laughs> Guylaine, um, I wanted to add the rubrics. I will attach rubrics to every lab. So like that, you know, the students is aware right away what they're being evaluated on. So their feedback will be directly related 
to a rubric that they will be seeing more often. So from day one, they'll have the rubric, which wasn't there. So thank you so much for everybody. You see, these are the list of, of, of all the labs that uh, we're gonna be suggesting and we'll be adding to it, hopefully. Um, and notice over here, this is what the labs would look like. Simple situation, they'll be like whole lab, like for example, missing some materials. So when they watch the video, they'll be able to fill it in. We suggested some verbs to use. Notice over here, the first lab making a solution is mainly just working on the procedure. How do we write a procedure, right? And of course, the more you go, notice here you start missing like, again, hold lab. Now we, we started off the procedure and then we start showing data collection, but we're giving them the table and they need to fill it up. Now this, the discussion section, potential error, notice that they're guided questions here to make sure that they're, they're, this is the kind of information that is needed to fill in this, this blank. So it's not gonna be an empty lab. It's, it's just filling it up. We're good. So these are feedbacks we got and we keep on, you know, every time some teacher sees this, they say, well, what about this? What about this? We're trying to include all of that to make sure that this, 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 uh, this uh, collection of labs will help everybody being in a, being in a, in an individualized setting, being in a, uh, in a like magistral, being in any setting that responds to all the teachers. And we did the same thing for the 4060. And hopefully this is gonna be a Christmas gift that's gonna be published for everybody, but I'm just waiting after the final touches because we wanna make sure that it's very easy, you know, easy to use. So what we're gonna do on every lab that we're gonna publish, we're gonna have a QR code also that's connected to the lab, to the video lab. So like that, you could give the, you could give the lab and they could just scan with their phone and they could have all everything at their tip of their hands. So we're gonna try to make it as friendly as possible for everybody. So we're just working on format, formatting and hopefully when that's done in a couple of weeks, we should be, <laughs> I promise you it'll be out before Christmas. Even if uh, to my detriment, I will stay on the weekend if I have to, to finish it up. It'll be a Christmas present to myself and to everybody. Um, and of course, uh, if you have any feedback, anybody wants to have access to them, they want to look at them, use them before the release time, please contact me and I'm more than happy to share it with you because uh, I want to have feedback. So the more we have feedback, the better it is, the, 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 the more the product would be useful. Other thing I want to share with you that I came across, I came across this article that talks about the FETs, okay? Uh, and they're talking about all the project and they had it all summarized. It's going to be in the, um, I'm gonna put this resource in the uh, resource list, but I just wanted to show you, well, I'm sure everybody's familiar with FET, you know? Uh, okay, let me just show you. They had added few new stuff. Okay, uh, here in Earth Science. Uh, here, uh, when we go to earth science here, for, for the 4059, we have lab of density. I don't know if everybody has seen it. Of course, this one is for the 62. I'm gonna try to have these, these lists by module. So it'll be easier if you ever wanna use the FET per module. I know right now we're working on the laboratory component, but eventually we're gonna do the same for the theory. But right now I know the labs is probably a priority. But just to let you know, also, when you get to the 59, you have wave intro, whoever's teaching also physics, you know, uh, for five, there is some here, gravity, of course, physics, they're known for physics and for chemistry, but also like um, you could use a lot of these wave interference. I know it's ahead of the, the game, wave on a string. Again, this is all sound. Um, you're talking about pH scale, which that was, I know some of you have seen before, static electricity and graphic force. So I know there's few were added and I got the notice. So I wanted to share that with you, like wave introduction. So just having the wave of water and see how the propagation of, of waves. So this is for 4059, if you're ever, uh, if you ever uh, need. And what's nice about this now, they, they got a, uh, HT uh, ML5 which is interactive activities with them. I don't know if anybody had tried them, 
Yeah, Jessica. I, I, I did. Uh, I did it for circuit and the uh, physics, um, the projectile motions, the cannonballs. And do you like it? Yeah, uh, it, it was for me. It's pretty easy to get them to introduce them to the circuit because I'm in the individualized class. I kind of want them to have an idea of what the how to connect a circuit and all that before they do it to minimize fire hazard. So it, it was useful and they can have the extreme value to see you now uh, hypothetically how things catch on fire, which was yeah. very useful and can relate it to real life. You know, if you connect too, too many things onto the uh, uh, extension cord, right? Yeah. What you see on the simulation is what you see in real life. <laughs> yeah. We don't want to test it, right? We don't want to test it. <laughs> but without burning my equipment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so okay so you find they're pretty good those ones the HTML file right yep okay uh anybody else have used them I know they have also biology section just to let you know the biology section it actually this one natural selection I had used it with my student it's amazing it's actually really fun it's about like ducks and rabbits, like it's the rabbits, like what happened if the wolves eat the rabbits and stuff. So it's natural selection. So this is for 62. It's a very nice activity to, to, to do. Also gene expressions. This is another one, you know, for biology, whoever's teaching biology, uh, molecular polarity, that's a bit more uh, advanced. This one I use color vision. I use it often in physics. It's amazing. Mm. This actually mm. is actually really, really cool for a visual to see how the light propagate from to versus to from, you know, I find this super interesting, you know, um, and of course, statics, electricity, this was always, uh, those I haven't tried, V equal IR and, and uh, the resistance to wire, this one I haven't used. I don't know if anybody has used them, but um, I find I find this, uh, the site is pretty, pretty uh, useful. I mean, of course, there's a lot more than, uh, you know, I mean, a lot more than, uh, than we need in term of, uh, in term of, uh, content but it, it's interesting now they also have math which was not there before you know uh which is again when we're talking before for literacy and uh, numeracy they have actually pretty interesting uh pretty interesting uh new uh new addition that they were added like here like uh, the means of course the the, the the statistics center variation number play you know uh and of course like we're talking about number line and operation number line and distance you know for for uh, you know um ratio and proportions these are basic concepts that you may want to use to practice with them mixed numbers curve fitting this is a very interesting one uh fraction introduction again fet before did not have math to that extent now they're developing a lot of a lot of uh huh. they have a huge uh they have a huge repertoire of of math because well obviously they they, they needed uh, for for the physics for the chemistry for the other sciences so they they're they're trying to um to 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 have the prerequisites in other words and it's pretty fun you know what i mean if you bring in the concept and you you could kind of share with them uh this is interesting function builders, you know, just for variation. The more variation you have, the more engagement you may have. Area builders, you know, to calculate. This is for geometry. We know our students, uh, actually, this could be cool for the SEC 353. You know, they always have like fun shapes for building areas, just for reviews, just to get back. Graphing lines. Notice over here, it's starting to, the, the list is, uh, it's huge. Uh, I, I received their, their, their newsletter. So when I got it this, this week, right away, I wanted to share with you all the resources that was, um, that was, uh, that could be added to, to a list. Maybe we could all share. Um, that being said, <laughs> that being said, I know I jumped right away into the resource because I was so excited to share these things with you, but from, uh, from Bim's side, uh, Barbara, 
do you have anything to share with us? No, there are no new exams. Uh, although I appreciate I received feedback on three exams on the four, all practical exams, the 460B, the 460C, and a chemistry um, 5061B. So those uh, corrections will be done and it should be online in the next month. But I have no news about the changes or when the DED will be online. So I'm just waiting and then we're going to readjust all the exams once we get the new uh, DEDs. So that's no new projects online. Yeah. So I assume Madame Paris did not speak of it uh, in uh, on the French side, right? No. Uh, well, I didn't attend, but my colleague went and um, she said no. She just introduced herself and um, she's studying the dossiers for the moment. And um, yeah. so we're waiting yeah. to hear. Maybe in the new but year. Hopefully. Well, Madame Paris, just, uh, I was looking while we we're talking and I just got, uh, got uh, an email from her that she will not be able to come. It's because... a family thing. So she apologized. Yeah, that's why I was like, I found it a bit odd that she's not here at this time. <laughs> she said the next time for sure she'll attend and hopefully uh, we'll get our uh, questions answered. But since I have everybody over here and I'm, I'm very thankful that you're all over here, do we have any questions for Madame Paris? Because um, I had sent, I had sent, uh, I don't know if you had a chance to take a look at the newsletter, but I had sent, um, I, I don't know if you had a chance to, if you received uh, like a, a document where you could write your questions in it. And if you haven't, we would like to maybe put together a list of questions that we could send her ahead of time. So maybe by next time when she comes to the meeting, she could come back with some of your answer. So we won't give her a candid kind of, uh, you know, because most of the time when it's candid kind of questions, we get, uh, we'll get back to you and we never do, right? Or we'll get them like much, much super. I'm going to use the word super, you know, I apologize for that. <laughs> super, I mean, uh, there's no time, uh, expiry time on that. So, <laughs> So do we have any questions that we, we, we need to ask? I had a question me I had put on the list was like, do we have any biology prototype coming up soon? But other than the biology prototypes, do we, do we need, uh, do, are we happy with our exams? Are we happy with our GDs? We're not happy with our exams. So any exams that we should say, any new exams in? Yes, Sarah. Please. What are the updates? Uh, then we talk about the update of the checklist and uh, the attach of the criteria of the evaluation in there. Is it still in the... What do you mean? You mean the new exams? Yeah, no, not necessarily, but for all the exams, I thought we were reviewing the evaluation criteria and simplifying all the evaluation criteria into one document. So, but I haven't seen any of them. Is it this year? Or is it next year? Uh, is it only for new exams? What's going on there? Okay. Because it takes time to uh, to evaluate. So uh, it's uh, so I thought these uh, changes were really nice. Okay. If they were coming, so I don't know. Uh, am I the only one to ask, or are we? Um, honestly, honestly, I, 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 you're right. I got a sneak peek on those and I, I really, really liked what I saw and I thought they're, they're nicer, but, um, I don't know. So maybe this is something I could put on my list, the new checklists, uh, when are they going to be, uh, maybe published or accessible? Okay. So thank you. That could be a question I could, I could add. Okay. So the new checklist. Okay. And uh, the, the other question is related to the computer use. Uh, I don't know if it's still in process, but uh, somebody, I don't recall when we discussed that, but somebody had mentioned that we would replace the writing by computer use in exams. Is it still in process? Is it going to come soon? Or is it something, because I really have concerns about this one. To be honest with you, uh, I don't know about that. Every okay. I, I know there was talks in math about that. I know okay. it was more and more public in, about that in math, but um, I, I, I know everything is in process. To be honest with you, everything is in process. So, when? We'll wait. I 
no problem. I just want to know if there was anything really. Uh, well, I could add to the list that I could add to the list. I'll, I'll add the checklist. I'll add anything uh, electronic. Uh, electronic. You want evaluation, or you're talking about talking about evaluation, right? Yeah. Okay. So I'll do that. So I'll, I'll I'll add these two questions. The evaluation. I'll ask the um, if there is any evaluation online coming anytime soon. If there is a when is the new checklist for evaluation soon? Uh, okay, Jessica. Anything you had? Oh no, I just had a question. That when you said the evaluation online, I wasn't sure if it's, but I think I know what Sarah means now. Is the actual exam to be taken online versus having just a computer available for the student to type out like their results or their to write out their conclusion and stuff like that? Okay. 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 So I'll, I'll add these couple of questions for sure. Okay. Um, Maybe, uh, well, then we'll add the biology question, the checklist question, we'll uh, talk about exam online. Anything else? DED changes, if there's any DED changes, maybe? I don't know, any new, I know, I know, there is some new exams coming up, but when? I don't know. So maybe if there are new exams coming up, one thing I was asked, and maybe I, you could, guys could help me with that. They were asking what challenges our students are having in sciences. This is a question that was asked of me, and I don't know. Well, I know what to answer to that, but I want to know what you guys think because you're on the floor, you're with the students on a daily basis. So please share with me. Yes, Jessica. I. I really like, like a, this is a more like a general question. I don't know if it's possible, but since we're just kind of talking here, because I find the TS, some of the TSE course are all over the place. And so is the exam. Uh, the, the contents, you know, you got atoms, got this and that. There's no a nicely packaged thing. Like for example, when, when we were dealing with the old curriculum, there was one on energy and electricity, how is it produced, uh, the pollutions and all that. So everything is tied in nicely and it kind of, I get to keep the students focus more because I can keep on using the real life example versus going all over the place. And so that is what I'm finding difficult because the curriculum change so that they are including a lot of different things to a single course. For example, the 4061 in particular, I find it to be over the place. And it was hard for me in the individualized setting to kind of remind the student what was the purpose of this. Okay, you mean the electricity course, the 4061? Yeah. Like there's there's this and there's the pollution there's that there's the energy tears there's how to build a circuit there's the atoms there is a periodic per table, and the exam itself is also like a little bit of everything, super difficult to prep, and also like my student literally just kind of study in the middle and say well what's the what's the meaning of this? Okay, so you mean well, uh, yeah, I don't know how we could format that kind of questions like because if you take a look at 62 uh, is the same uh, it's a bit like I'll, it's the same topics it, it falls under an umbrella but it's like you're right it's not a continuum it's like a pieces of everything that makes that topic okay that is something probably we have to probably think about how we could format that you mean the idea why behind it like they, they build the career program like that yeah so this is where I, I feel that the, the such a big things that probably never going to be done. But it's just wondering like when they create a new curriculum, why didn't they keep the idea, like relevant ideas together? Mm -hmm. Like, and, but I know like curriculums are you know, such a big things that this is probably never going to get changed. <laughs> but well, since yeah. you asked. <laughs> Well, you see, so like, that's why I'm. I used to be able to teach the new, the the old science, much more easily, and I was able to tie it in with real life much easily, 
and to hold the students focus much more easily than the new curriculum. Yeah. Well, that's what Julie was saying here. Julie Vallée, she was saying, I had to put the content in topics and build the Moodle with video explanations and notes. The SOFAD book supports my video with exercises. So you could kind of puzzle it out, I guess. But we could, yeah, well, we could ask her, like, what's the thought behind the, the, the program? Maybe she could give us some sense to it. Uh, you know, I honestly, those are hard questions. <laughs> I can't answer that, but yeah, thank you, Jess. I'll, 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 you know, I'll, I'll, I'll ask it. I mean, there's, there's no harm in asking, right? Maybe I'm sure they must have some logic. I hope. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, Michelin, I haven't been very communicative because I'm still not. I don't have students working in it, but I'm working on, um, like, I'm trying to look at the uh, intellectual operations and the competency-based learning. So I'm anxious to see if actually some of that has come through the science courses when I do it. Um, my students will probably use the biology, but I mean, they're definitely like the stuff that you showed us, I think will be super excellent with the videos and stuff. I can see that being a real big hit and helping us with the labs. But uh, I kind of understand what Jessica is saying, because when I taught the old program, it seemed to be pretty straightforward Forward, it's all together and it follows and that's some of the things that like I'm noticing with even the the math it's like the self-ed math you're dumped right into it and problem solve right away without some of the prior learning that a traditional teacher I guess would be used to so that's kind of how I see it so yeah I can imagine it would be like for the students too if you're not because we don't have the time as an individual teacher to actually like I think what she did is like group the topics that's pretty cool so it's a good strategy to know for me in the future because now I know how I can sort of tackle it but I have I'm not there yet so thank you for letting me speak my piece there oh no I always say you know whatever if you thought it others thought it it's just you have the courage to share it so thank you for everyone <laughs> for sharing it because because uh, I mean and, and, and Julie, thank you also, and, and Jessica for bringing these two, and, and Sarah too, like bringing these com uh, commentary and this question up, because I mean, when we get asked these questions are difficult to answer when I, you know, I, I could tell you from my teacher experience, right? You know, but uh, hearing other realities only help. So here also, Julie had added, uh, my students are not used to learning by project. They just want to put answers in boxes. So when I uh, when I whip out my projects like ESC 63, they struggle to dig deep into them. I have maybe two that are really into it because they are artists or hands-on, but the students trying to just get their prereqs, they'll roll their eyes. Not every, we're, we all learn differently, right? <laughs> Thank you, uh, Judy. Yeah. Well, that's why if you combine it with the 4060, <laughs> we'll have a second class to complain about, right? <laughs> but we have to, we ha you know, we always have to do stuff that we're not comfortable with. How many of us, we do everything that we love, right? <laughs> and it, it's just, I, I don't know if it's only a... Uh on school there, but it's seen a big change this year. And I don't know if it's the result of the COVID because of the type of high school students who are getting this year, but the motivation is not the same at all. And the prerequisites are really a lot more demanding than what we used to have in previous years. So I would make two categories. When we talk about the 64, for example, I do 64 before 63, just, to real, uh, just for the students to realize that 64 prepares for chemistry and physics in there. Uh, and 63 is difficult because of all the reasons of mechanization of working there. So when they start 64 and they realize all the prerequisites in there, wow, big holes, big, big holes. And uh, I'm not sure sometimes what to start with because just talking about the periodic table, some people don't even know what the periodic table is all about. They've done their high school studies and they graduated in high school maybe 10 years uh, ago. So they come back and for enriched science, they need to do the 63 and 64 before they do the chemistry or physics. That's a hard gap. For the 61 and 62, I see more people. Those are the people that we get this year 
are the high school students who failed over the last two or three years. And all I can say is if they failed without any exam, as they didn't have any exam for COVID, that means we have the bottom of the population. And I find it really harder than what I had the previous year. I don't know if it's the case. In fact, I have a lot less 61, 62, and I have a lot more uh, people wanting to be uh, well, nurses or whatever, and they need to do the 63 and 64 before. Those are hard. You know, when you haven't studied science for years, coming back is a lot of, and I feel for what you're saying, Jessica, it's a lot of dump uh, of a lot of concepts that they really focus on. So yeah. I don't know. Uh, can we change anything? Probably not. Uh, and But I feel it's really more difficult than it used to be. And I taught the old uh, old program as well. No comparison. It was straight. It was uh, a lot quick, faster in there. This hasn't changed for a lot of years and still remains. It takes more than, you know, I, don't, I wonder really what the average of hours required right now to succeed to those. Uh, I stick probably more than 50 hours because the problem we have in adult education is they need a good mark. They just don't need to pass. If they needed only 60%, no, no trouble. But they need in these days, they need more than 80%. They need some CEGEP would require 85, 90. It's hard for them. So we're talking about an average of one hand hours for somebody who wants to work. Yeah. And uh, so I don't know, but uh, that's something I really, uh, I don't know how to express, but uh, I find it really hard this year. We are competing with a very good market. We are competing with yeah. a very good market. So a lot of these students, they wanna work and make money for their families and themselves. And they still want to go to school when they're, it's, the struggle is too, is, is too real and it's too much. I agree. Yeah. Michelle? Yeah. Um, yeah. I, just want, I just want to say that uh, I understand what she's saying because I definitely see it in the math and I see it in the French second language. They're, you know, they're at secondary four or they're at secondary five and they just need to finish that last level or they have to come back. Uh, they're not capable. We're like we're having to they're very frustrated and we're having to drop them back into lower levels. And uh, yeah, and so they start, they look at it, they work at it for a bit. And then there's a lot of local jobs in our community right now. So even with supporting them, like, and then now they've got the idea that they can do distance education, which I'm sure everybody has that, you know, opportunity. And so now they're uh, going to edu distance education and then they're not advancing at all. So yeah, it's a huge change and swing from like, you know, the COVID years and then we get them and they didn't, they don't, they haven't attained the skills and we're stuck with trying to fill in a lot of gaps. And it's, uh, it's not just the one credit course of 25 or 50 hours there it's like a lot more than that so thank you again yeah but just a question i mean just out of curiosity you find our students right now they're struggling i know i know before our students struggled oh, our students always struggled but do you find right now they're struggling a lot more than the before for me, like, I, I would say definitely because you've got the mental health issues mixed in there. They've got more choices than ever, which they think that gives them that independence. And I guess they got to work through that system thinking they can handle distance learning versus being in class. And then when they're in class, like I have to say too, uh, with the old programs, I had developed my strategies, my supports, my systems. And now we're just, you know, it's where I'm learning a whole bunch. So I'm trying to keep up, trying to find solutions, trying to, to manage it. But do you get one student that sort of gets lost on the trail and you know uh, now we're trying to really like for example have two guys that want to do uh trucking and heavy machinery mechanics i don't even know if they can make it through the basic secondary two math to be able to do those courses which is really frustrating so now i'm trying to bring in a speaker that will motivate them to show them about the course and what what they need to do and then hopefully from there it'll be enough to to get them to hang in there and try and finish those but that's what i'm experiencing english not so much a problem because i feel i'm pretty really super strong with that so i can really fill in the holes and make it you know really quickly and then i don't lose those kids as fast but yeah that's yeah job market though big thing too 
do you feel do you feel for our students if we kind of connect more with the uh, SP, like uh, the, the, the VT, sorry, vocational, like having people like in different fields coming in and like talking about why they need these courses might kind of stimulate them to stick to it. Because I find like, I find like right now, especially like if we take a look at the hot uh, fields, like if you want nursing or whatever, depending on the area, having somebody come in and say, well, why do you need this math course? Why do you need this? Why you need that? Just might give them a purpose. I don't know, just yeah. thoughts. That's where I went, yeah. Yeah. And here's, as uh, Julie said, um, I like the program change with 40% giving to the lab exams, which is great. Honestly, the, the lab uh, being evaluated at 40% kind of give them a breathing room mm -hmm. also, you know? It's such, sorry, I'm commenting on your comment. <laughs> and it's a good one, Charlie. It's much better than the old program. And it's true because back then it's a bit less. But I still don't understand why nurses need TSC 4063, but those going into woodworking don't. Uh, <laughs> let's not go there. The only comment I would add to that, I agree with you, but and that's what I used to, to get a 60%. I tell my students, you need 35 out of 40 on the lab exam, easy, and you need at least the explicit knowledge to have at least 18 out of 20. Still remaining to get a 90%, at least three tasks out of four being really great. And they are struggling with that. If you look at the average that it takes to have them get 80 percent i don't know what the average you have uh, julie in there but i find it really hard and thank you yes i do agree with you the 4063 is still a disaster not required to do nursing but we keep saying that and nobody wants to hear that so madame paris could uh, maybe do something about that i don't know well, we could, you know what this is why we want to have question. Yeah, this is why we wanted to have have her here. Like having these conversations are really important. And uh, yeah, Julie just added. I just think that book, uh, Voked, um, and the college uh, colleges don't look at the content. They just want a certain level of study. Uh, it would be nice if there was a conversation about it. Yeah. Oh my God! I tell you one thing. This conversation. And yes, Teresa, thank you. Uh, I'm so happy you're here. Uh, and I just wanted to say, I had a conversation about that. That we need to have a table where high school adult ed and CJP sits together and have a conversation, because CJP CJP they need to know what we're doing. They don't just they judge us too fast. You know just our, our guys too fast but they don't realize because we're teaching like a modular way that we're going in depth and our exams are not equivalent to the high schools the high school is cumulative yes but they're touching a lot more surface we're touching a lot more in depth you know so of course you know <laughs> equity fairness our guys are are struggling a lot more than than high school let's be honest and they should be, instead of being like chopped, you know, or encouraged or valued, they're being chopped, you know? They're being judged a lot harsher, which is not fair, you know? Anyways, and, and here, Julie just added to add to your comment, high school science lab exams don't use wood. Absolutely not. You're right, they're using everything but wood, yeah. So, and trust me, we had this conversation with Carceral also. You know, Kersagal are struggling. They don't even offer sciences because they can't use half of the stuff. So half of these 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 youngsters there that wants to reform their life, they, they, they come out and they have to still go to adult ed and compliments elsewhere while they could take the time to improve, you know what I mean? And make real changes. So anyway, these are all like, you know, yeah. Anyways, we're special. Thank you, Julie, for <laughs> highlighting that part. Um, Est-ce que je peux intervenir en français? C'est plus facile. Oui, 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 bien sûr. Vas-y, Richard. Okay. Um, en mathématiques, la communauté de mathématiques n'est pas démarrée encore. Mais en, à partir du mois de janvier, c'est Martin Franca qui va l'animer, pour ceux qui connaissent Martin. Et uh, les, les gens vont travailler sur quatre chantiers, soit uh, la révision uh, du programme FBC uh, pour en faire un programme qui va être en continuité avec le programme uh, du deuxième cycle. 
Donc, pas qui s'arrête en deux, mais qui continue vers la trois. On va travailler sur les évaluations aussi. Euh, donc, euh, utiliser le jugement professionnel du prof, euh, de accumuler des notes tout le long du cours, avec un examen final de 30 genre qui va être un, un examen de connaissances. On va aussi travailler sur un, un programme de deuxième cycle qui va amener euh, à l'AFP. Donc, oh euh, mon Dieu, c'est vrai? Oui. C'est amazing. Qui va avoir une passerelle si l'élève décide en, en cours de route que non, il veut continuer à, pour terminer son, son, son DES. Il va pouvoir le faire aussi. Et il y en a un autre que je ne me souviens pas. Donc, la communauté va commencer en janvier, si ça vous intéresse. Euh, même si, parce que la plupart de vous, je pense, enseigner aussi les mathématiques. Donc, euh, venez faire un tour. Euh, les, les, les rencontres, la première rencontre, on va se diviser en quatre équipes pour travailler ces quatre choses-là. Puis Martin, vous présentez ça en juin au ministère. C'est une commande du ministère. Il y en a des, à rechercher des appuis euh, du, des enseignants. Puis euh, s'il euh, y a assez de monde qui, qui veut le changer, mais on, on va travailler dans ce côté-là. Fait que pourrait être la même chose en science, j'imagine. Et tout ça sera introduit en anglais aussi, c'est ça, j'espère? Je ne sais pas ça. <rire> J'imagine. Si tu parles en français, habituellement, c'est en anglais, non, mais j'espère, j'espère. Ouais. Mais c'est des beaux projets. Et en tout cas, s'il y a juste à 50 de ces projets-là qui amènent à quelque chose, tant mieux, non? Absolument. So, this is, this is great news, what Richard was saying, that uh, starting January, Martha Francaire, he's my, my colleague from the French side, He's, he's starting four groups, uh, four groups. One of them is like a bridge program, a bridge program to VOCED. So students who do not want to necessarily continue all the way to SEC 5, that they want to finish after like SEC 2 and they go on to VOCED, then they'll have a, a, like a bridge program. Other people want to work on evaluation, mathematical evaluation. Other people want to work um, on the CCBE pro, uh, program. And the fourth one is, je m'appelle plus. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot. That je n'ai pas dit, je m'en rappelais pas non plus. <laughs> so, probably not as interesting, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> so if you're, if you're interested, definitely. Maybe, you know what, maybe we will, like, uh, if whoever is interested, let me know. And I'm going to also do that conversation in the math also. And maybe we could do also subgroups uh, in, 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 in the English sector and we could connect to Martin. I will speak to Martin and see how we could connect to, with them. So if you're interested, please think about it. And, and this might actually solve the problem of students who do not want to go into like, like uh, you know, the regular all the way to, to SEC 5. They just want to come in and take your, your, the, the math and just go out to VT. Maybe they'll have their own math class for that. And I, I hope that will be a great, great idea for our guys who want to just get faster on the market. Because like that, we don't lose those guys. Because yeah. most of them, we lose them. And sooner or later, they could do a lot more, like they could do a lot more than, you know? So we sh we're supposed to service everybody, by the way. And, and we don't want to miss those guys. So yeah, they're underserved, I find. Um, are we saying that students who wants to go to welding would not need to take the dreaded 3053? <laughs> if yes, I'm in. <laughs> uh, well, you know what? Let's not jump to conclusion yet because I think we have to kind of check and verify. But uh, definitely, definitely we'll look into those restrictions if this is an option. But, uh, but this is definitely would be very interesting because we have a lot of people who would be very happy with this kind of bridge programs. Ce que Martin disait, c'est si on garde 80 du programme puis on change juste 20 il n'y a, a pas besoin de changer le programme au complet. Donc, c'est plus facile de, de travailler sur ce 20 %-là qui, qui est irritant. C'est souvent pas tout le programme. Fait que, ça demande moins de, quand on parlait de changer tout le programme, ce qui est impossible. Là. Mais si on peut changer juste 20 il n'y a aucun problème. Ça, ça se fait de façon pratique. Oui. And and I think I think this was a conversation I also had with Martin. The idea is even if people let's say take that bridge and they get on the market, if they ever let's say change their mind, they come back and they're prepared. They've done it already, like at at a mark, like let's say at seventy five percent the program. So they have to just kind of learn that twenty five. So it's easier to bring them back and finish up. Let's say the the the, the to, to 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 get to their sec five versus versus saying you know. If now the market is hot, if there are changes that needs to be done, now is the now the government is open 
for it because the market requires it. And exactly what you said, labor shortage is dictating what the education system needs. So if we need change, now is the time, really, because we won't get this chance again. Honestly, I don't know. Not to be negative, but you know, if they're listening, let's go for it. <laughs> yeah. So um, I'll keep you posted anyways. I'll keep you posted. I'll be, I'll be definitely speaking to Martin to get uh, even more detail and a time and a date for that. And uh, and hopefully there'll be a first first communication with uh, a start somewhere for for our for our students. You know we need it, and hopefully that will maybe influence the science too, because our science is you know again right now. The, remember the purpose of the fifty nine and sixty is because our students are not exposed enough to sciences, and if you do the fifty nine and sixty, there are not much nicer courses of an intro courses to right away go rough and tough with like a 63. So it's a nice segue if you want. Trust me, you have to do it at one run time first, <laughs> you know? So um, yeah, a message. good to know. So yeah, we'll keep in touch and I'll make sure that Benoit, who's responsible of Carrefour to, to let me know so I could also put it in, my, in our newsletter too. So like that, at least we'll, we'll have the information right away. So, well, I don't know if there's anything anyone would like to add to this because now I, I, I hear all your concern. I'm gonna write these questions, send them to Madame Paris and hopefully uh, for the sciences, we'll get her to come back, hopefully uh, our next uh, science meeting. And if not, at least we'll get some answers from those for those for our questions, at least maybe. And, uh, and hopefully we'll, we'll, we'll know where, where to go with that. And thank you, Richard, for the math uh, heads up, because I know we talked about it a while ago, but I didn't realize Martin went ahead with it. So thank you. Oui, Michel? Yes. Okay. So, so, so my question is, uh, just to make sure, like um, nor the traditional, like in Ontario, they have the basic math, they have college math and, and uh, university math in the high school system. And we don't have that here in Temiskaming for our high school uh, students, nor at adult ed. But I, so when you talk about a bridge program, is that like something where you, you've got the requirements of what, the, let's say, a home care course needs or, or a, a mecha mechanical course, and then you build a math program and you're allowed local program credits for it, and that's how that works? Yeah. That'd be super cool. You know, like some, some of our courses, some of our vocational uh, like uh, career, uh, you know, they don't require all the way to sec five math, right? right? So some math, they tell you now you need a sec three to get into it. And sometimes they, they, they don't need the sec three, but they still have to do the sec three, right? So in this way, it's like bridging, bridging them to go faster to those like kind of career program, but having a math course that is a lot related to those fields, instead of having something more generic that leads you to a sec five math. Yeah. And we don't have that now, nowhere. Okay. Okay. No, we don't. It's the same idea if when we, we had the conversation with Martin, it's the same idea of having the, the CST pathway and the SN pathway. Like the CST is like, like the minimum required to get your like certificate versus the SN. Now we're looking more like, okay, I'm planning to take sciences or whatever, like specialty later on. So it requires a higher uh, TS or the uh, SN, you know, pathways, right? So in this case, it's the same concept, but you're talking about secondary two, either they go to this kind of math or they go to the regular sec three math. So they're creating another pathway at a, a, from sec two, which I think is, it's in this case is very needed. Well, I, I think we're needed. Like your trucker guys, you know, uh, they'll probably take a math like that. That makes more sense to them. And they're getting faster into their trucking program, which we need lots of truckers right now, right? On the yeah. on the roads. You know, we need a lot of everything right now, right? Yeah. So yeah, those kind of career programs will have pathways that will get them faster to where they need to go. Oh, that'd be a great question for the ministry lady then, because I think there's a big need for that. So thank you. Thanks for explaining that. Yeah. And, and here should be said, I do not have, uh, I do have one more question. How do we prove that immigrant students have not taken science in their home country, therefore need TSG course? Could it be uh, optional for them? And I said immigrant, uh, but could be candidate, uh, Canadians not from Quebec. Well, uh, it's, uh, if it's like we said, 
originally this the TSG courses. If you don't have a high a proof of some sort that you've done them, you uh, you cannot skip them. So in this case, well, they could take exam only. Julie, to to answer your question, you could just do exam only. They could register to exam only and just go do their exams. So they don't have to take the course. Just they have to like prepare for it. Yeah, France. I have a student like that. And he said, where he take his class, he didn't have lab like we do. Yeah. And he had problem to do the science with us. He was so stressed because no, I never do lab like we do. So yeah, but we have fun with the lab. Yeah, yeah. Now it's true, sciences in sec three elsewhere are not necessarily uh, lab. Uh, there's no components of labs you rule elsewhere. Yeah, even in high school, I'm sorry, some some science courses, I don't know how much lab, really a real lab time they have. You know, there's labs and there's real labs. You know what I mean? So, um, well, Jessica said, you could say it. <laughs> um, no, because um, I feel from my Disney education students, they are working professionals mostly uh, about half immigrants. And the amount of loop that the government is forcing them to, to go through during a labor shortage is just ridiculous. At yeah. least I have a few students who literally move out of the province, right? Because they have family, they, have, they, they cannot spend two, three years just filling up prerequisites that has nothing to do. Like I have a student who are doing nursing Four zero six three. Seriously, do they need to know this? Yeah. <laughs> no, they really don't. And when when push comes to shove, for some of them, moving out of the province turned out to be easier. I know. <laughs> Which it's is sad. really sad. But look what's happening in uh, in uh, in Quebec versus Hawkesbury. Just literally a bridge, and you're already equipped. And you know, yeah. Yeah, thank you, Michelle. Some in your region, just the border, North Bay, Ontario. Yeah. Well, look, we can solve like all the problems of the world, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> sorry, we we're all have the intention, but at least, you know, these are real, real concerns that should be brought up. And I feel, I, I value everybody's comments and, and everybody's concern, and we all have the same ones. So I will definitely put them together uh, and uh, we'll send them off to Madame Paris and hopefully she'll have some answer to us. And even if she doesn't answer, at least she's aware of this is something that we, we feel. And hopefully if there's enough of us saying it, maybe then maybe somebody will hear something somewhere. Je veux dire que ce qu'elle va dire pendant la rencontre sera pas enregistré. Donc si vous voulez savoir ce qu'elle dit, il faut être présent à la rencontre. Parce qu'il faut que je coupe le, les commentaires des gens du ministère lorsque je fais la, la, la so that, that's why we're having these meetings. You're right. And and uh, c'est clair. When they come, is that a courtesy for the sector? Because they want to hear, but they 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 can't. Uh, they're 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 uh, they're held responsible of every word they say. So that's why it stays with whatever whatever you hear is what stays here. It's not. It doesn't get published. You're right. Thank you, Richard. Uh, yes, Michelle. Last quick, uh, oops, uh, yeah, last quick comment is that like in Rue right now where my son works, there's a, a lot of uh, a large Philippine population that have moved in to work at techno sub as machinists and stuff, and they can't get qualified with uh, the French mother tongue and also some math that they need to do. They're already working. So I think the other issue or solution would be industry to start getting involved with the VOC ed programs so that those are, are supported in uh, what the demand uh, so that maybe they'll listen that way too. Just just a thought there. Thank you very much. That's a very good idea. And this is another suggestion that I had mentioned before. I had mentioned why don't we provide adult ed courses in industry? We move a teacher goes to industry and make it part of their day, their schedule, an hour of math, an hour of something. Yeah. So these time could be credited and we could get them back when the market dies out. So they slowly get their, their high school leavings and their certifications. So at least we have credible employees eventually. But, but again, that's exactly what you're saying. We need like maybe the industry dictates our economy. So if the industry say, this is what we need, then hopefully maybe we'll put some pressure somewhere to hear us too. Anyway, so I guess we need all these great ideas. 
thank you. Thank you so much. I kept you, uh, you're, you're great sports like always. I so appreciate everybody. Have a lovely evening. Thank you so much. And I do apologize for Madame Paris, but definitely next time, hopefully, cross my fingers and we get answers. So thank you so much. I'll put all your concerns on a piece of paper and send it to her. Have a lovely week. I miss you all and I'll see you soon. <laughs>